Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bitcoin Not Crypto. My name is Forrest Hoddle on X and Noster. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to send and receive Bitcoin from your hardware wallet. Today, we're going to use the Bitbox O2 as our example, but this is going to work on any uh, hardware wallet, not just this one. If you did need a hardware wallet, I do have a link specifically to this one in the description, and we're going to just get right into it. So what I am going to use is Bitcoin Well. They're a non-custodial platform, which means when you send them dollars, they send you Bitcoin directly, which works really well if you want to immediately store it on your hardware wallet, like I am in today's video. Now, it doesn't necessarily work that well if you're making really small purchases because it's going to create a specific UTXO for each one of those transactions. So I have another video, which I will link in the description on my solution to that, which is buying uh, Bitcoin on the Lightning Network through Bitcoin Well and building a large balance in a Lightning wallet and then using their free swap function to swap that into on-chain and send that to my hardware wallet in a larger UTXO. If you don't really understand UTXOs as well, I will also post a link in the description to a video where me, Rajat, and Jor explain UTXOs in, in their entirety. You also don't need to use Bitcoin well if you already have an exchange, if you already have some Bitcoin on an exchange, these steps are going to be basically the same. You're just going to be sending it out of your Bitcoin balance from an exchange and into the receiving address, which is what's really important about all this. So here we are on Bitcoin well, but this is where I'm going to add in my new wallet address. So first off, we need to plug in our hardware wallet or we need to find our hardware wallet public address. So with the Bitbox, you're going to sign in, you're going to plug it into your computer and you get to the Bitbox app here. So when you connect your hardware wallet to your computer, you're go then going to open up the corresponding software that is uh, that works with your hardware wallet, or you're going to use something like Sparrow that is uh, usable with different wallets. Um, this is the Bitbox app. All these software uh, applications are going to look very similar to this. And we're going to look for a receive button, which will show access to our public key, which is where we are sending Bitcoin. So we're going to click open here or receive. Uh, we have 20 different options of public wallet addresses. This is all within the same wallet, however, and we're just going to verify this. And uh, so that comes up with the full public key here, and it comes up with that as well on my Bitbox, which I'm just confirming that it's the same right one. Before I'm confirming, however, I'm going to copy this and yes, that is correct. You could also scan a QR code if you're buying this through your app and uh, instead of a computer. Right now, I'm doing it through a computer, however. So we're going to go back to the dashboard here on Bitcoin Well. I'm going to add this in as my receiving wallet. I'm going to do new test wallet. <laughs> and we're going to just paste in our address and add that. So we now have our new test wallet here, which is the right one. We have the on-chain price, and of course we can buy Lightning too, but our hardware wallet cannot hold Lightning. Um, so these are different ways of paying through Bitcoin Well. You can do a cash voucher through their ATM. You can do an online bank transfer or an e-transfer. This is in Canada. This might look slightly different in the US. And I'm just gonna do an e-transfer. When I click this, it'll come up with a email to send to a uh, security question and a security answer. And you want to just copy and paste those into your uh, banking and send over uh, an amount. I'm gonna send um, $30 right now, just so that I can do a couple different things for this video's sake. Before you send, if you're using, if you're using Bitcoin well, before you send, make sure that you have uh, just selected your speed because you, you cannot change this after. Um, so either you do a batch transaction, which is actually free, but they only do those once a day, or you can do an instant transaction, which will include it in the next block and it has an estimate of fees. And you can look at the fees or you can look at um, basically how congested the fee market is. And right now, I mean, yesterday was much better actually for this, but we can take a look at mempool and we can actually see there's quite a few transactions in here. And wow, wow look at that. Ocean actually just mined another block. That's great. Um, so, it's actually uh, looks like there's a little bit of activity going on. Yesterday, there was, you know, not even full blocks getting through. As you can see here, there's a not a full block there. And 
you know, uh, quite a few empty blocks yesterday. This was where I was doing my test transactions last time. So this is something to be concerned about if uh, you have, if you if you don't want to spend too many sats, you might want to just do a batch transaction and just wait. I'm going to, however, pay the fees and do an instant transaction, and I'm okay with that. So the e-transfer has been sent, and here it's already processing. I sent $30 Canadian, and it's going to send it directly to my hardware wallet once this confirms and once this gets put into the next block. So we'll stay tuned. We'll take a look at um, some of the information that we get, and we're going to actually look at that in the mempool. If you're doing something where you don't want to give up your connection to this Bitcoin, um, putting in information of the transaction into a public space like uh, mempool is not the way to go because you're essentially connecting yourself in some way to that transaction. So we can actually see that the transaction has been sent here and there's uh, this is the transaction right here. Uh, it's received and it is an incoming transaction. It is not confirmed yet. So that happened pretty quickly from Bitcoin Well. And if we open up on our app, there'll be some information about this transaction, right? You can either copy and paste if you really wanted to look. Again, think about your privacy, but if you really wanted to look, and for this case, I don't care about privacy, um, I'm going to look either, you could look up that exact wallet or you could press this explore button and you can see the transaction ID, the address, or you can open in an external block explorer, which I'm going to do now. And this is uh, this opens up Blockstream Explorer and looks like we're overpaying <laughs> um and this is the transaction here and it's unconfirmed so it hasn't been put into the block yet but you can see here actually this is my transaction it's 0 0.00025628 bitcoin that's the total amount of bitcoin i'm getting personally i like the visualizer of mempool a little bit better so we can actually see this transaction is being placed into this next block it looks like we paid the amount of fees that needs to be put in bitcoin transaction just got one confirmation it's in this block it's in block 891368 which was mined by the mara pool and that was a long time between transactions. This one was 61 minutes and this one had just happened. So there was a, a crazy uh, leg in there between blocks um, because the difficulty adjustment has gone up. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's all on luck uh, who mines it and how long it takes. But they aim for 10 minute transactions. So let's take a look now at the Bitbox um, app and at the transaction that we have confirmed. So here we are at our wallet. We can see we have uh, one confirmation. We need about six for it to be fully confirmed, which just means there needs to be six blocks uh, total that this uh, transaction has been included in. So we can see here we have uh, 25,628 sats worth currently uh $28.52 Canadian, uh, which is crazy to me. Um, okay, so we've now figured out how to receive them. We can see them in our transaction history. We can look at them here in this app. Now, you can either buy or sell. They actually have the ability to buy and sell through the Bitbox app. A lot of hardware wallet uh, software services have that. But let's send this Bitcoin. And I'm going to press send here and we're going to enter an address and what we can do here is we could send all we could send a specific amount of sats a specific amount of canadian dollars and we can set our um, rate here which in the settings you can actually allow to customize a little bit more as well uh, we can do medium high low whatever and we're going to enter an amount so i'm going to do around half of them right now so let's do 2500 sats and the address that i'm going to send it to is uh i'll show you so this is the address that i'm going to send it to this is the swap function on bitcoin well so i'm actually going to swap this uh on-chain bitcoin to um on lightning bitcoin and this will send it to my my wallet address my my uh, lightning wallet address and it will consolidate it with the rest of the transactions that i have on that wallet and um, there is a minimum amount of swap and a maximum amount of swap. So what we do here is we find the address that we want to send it to and we copy that. And then we go back to the app, which I will do now. And we can enter that address. 
and it's going to calculate fees. It's going to be about $13 and 91 cents. And, um, let's review it. And we actually need to confirm this on our Bitbox here. So it's, it's asking me how many, uh, the, uh, is the address, right? Is the amount of sats, right? And everything looks good. So we're just going to confirm it on the device itself and the transactions confirmed. And we will see, uh, the transaction has been signed and sent. So we'll click X there. So now we have an outgoing transaction, which we can, again, we can look at that specific transaction ID. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to take a look at it again in mempool just to show you guys what is going on. So I'm pasting that transaction in and we can see here we've paid uh, 765 sats or 60 cents. And it looks like we might make it into the next block or possibly it might get pushed out depending on how high the fees go. This is my total amount, uh, my one UTXO, and it's sending, it's basically splitting up the UTXO. So part of it is this one here, the 12, uh, 12,500. And this is my change address, which goes back to uh, my wallet. And this is the fee here. So this is how much I'll be left with in the wallet. And this will be the transaction here. And we'll just wait for that to confirm. And uh, we'll have some, I'll have some finishing thoughts here um, and uh, some recommendations for next lessons to learn for you. We have our outgoing transaction confirmed here. This has happened. It's got 10 confirmations found by Foundry USA. And we can open up Bitbox here and see it as well. Here we have it on Bitbox as well. This is the transaction that's been sent out and we'll confirm it on Bitcoin well as I sent it to the swap address. Here it is here with the transaction swapped and let's check it out on Coinos on my Lightning wallet. Here it is in my Lightning wallet. There's zero network fees for the Lightning network. Just paid the minor fees to send it to the swap address and then from there it was free and there was no fees associated with it. So that was how to send a transaction, how to receive a transaction in your hardware wallet. Now, a couple things to keep in mind here is you're gonna wanna be aware of minor fees, and this is also doing it in a slightly permissioned way by using, what I did was I used Bitbox's node for this. Now I could attach uh, my own node to the software using the Electrum node, or I could, use Sparrow and connect any sort of node to it, my Bitcoin Core node or Knots or anything, uh, Umbral, Start9, um, any of that kind of stuff I could set up to uh, facilitate these transactions and to keep it private and to keep it permissionless and not have to use and go through somebody else's node. Now, that's all more advanced stuff, so I will make more advanced videos on that. The next video that I'm going to make and probably will be in uh, in sequence of this is how to recover my Bitcoin wallet. If I've lost my hardware device, if I need to recover it in something else, I'm actually going to show you how to do that. And that's why I left 12,363 sats on this wallet. I'm going to recover it and get access back to those sats. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video, which is popping up right here. If you guys have any additional questions, if you need some additional support, I do one-on-one -on -one Bitcoin coaching, and you can check out the link in the description for that. We can talk about security best practices, how all this stuff works. If you have you know, questions you want to ask me directly, that's the way to do it. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.